So we know during the pandemic that what an important role doctors they had to play, how they were there always, you know, on the front and dealing with all the problems and issues. Now, we've all gone to doctors many times in our lives. Now, when we go to the doctor, what do you expect or how do you expect the doctor to treat you? And what kind of a doctor do we feel uh, comfortable with? Yeah, uh, you know, like a doctor who actually talks to you, makes you feel comfortable, and it does not just say, okay, take this and go, right? You want someone who really wants to, you know, yes, give you that kind of personal attention, isn't it? And when we go to doctors, we go with a lot of hope, a lot of expectations that everything is going to be all right. Now, with medical sciences, you know, I, I think advanced uh, so much that uh, there is hope and there is, it seems, a cure for almost everything. And yes, if you go to the doctor at the right time, at the right stage, there are chances that yes, you will be cured and you'll be saved. Now, when we go to read this chapter, we look, we think, you know, that uh, doctors have to be patient always, they have to be understanding always. Do we realize that doctors also have a personal life? Yes. And they work for so long, the working hours, right? And in hospitals and when there's a rush, lot of rush and too many patients, there are times where they have to work double shifts also, they are working night shifts also. How do you think it expects, uh, you know, affects their personal behavior? How does it affect their personal life? Can anybody tell me? So it does make them a little, what, annoyed, a little angry, a little short-tempered, and they might not deal us uh, with the way that we expect them to. We forget, you know, like uh, that doctors also, they are at the end of the day human beings. They need uh, encouragement, they need rest, they need understanding, right? And yes, they need to be right, quite maybe comfortable in their own space and then maybe they'll be able to deal with us. But sometimes the doctors themselves are going on with so many issues and so many problems, but they do not let it show to their patients. And with a very calm face, with poised, uh, you know, face, uh, right, they deal with all the issues, they deal with all the problems. And uh, the patient is unaware of what is uh, happening uh, in the doctor's life. So we really appreciate doctors for dealing uh, with us because even if you go with a minor cut, you know, or you have a cold or a slight fever, for you, it is the biggest problem that has happened to you. But the doctors have been seeing all these things every day and so many times a day that for them, it is something very routine. So sometimes they appear to be a little casual. And now in this chapter, we are going to read about, yes, the doctor's uh, personal life, how it can affect the way he deals with his patients, but once again here, yeah, that sometimes doctors take risks to go out of their way to save their patients. And yes, we should appreciate them. And uh, sometimes things go wrong uh, and uh, might not turn out the way they expect. And we've seen how, you know, like, yes, the people, they protest, they get violent, which is very, very wrong. It's very, very wrong the way we go around damaging public property, go around hurting the doctors and creating a problem for others. So no one does that intentionally, isn't it? So sometimes things are beyond human control and these things, they happen. So let us, uh, once again, we need to say a big thanks to our warriors who have been there at the front, right, for almost two years now. And the doctors, they have really lived up to the challenge. We've lost many doctors also in this pandemic and it's very difficult you know like yeah for so much time is spent so much experience is there 
with, which comes with age and uh, that is uh, a big loss for all of us when we lose someone of this caliber or someone of this experience, someone of this great importance, right? So let's come to the chapter. This chapter, it is, as I told you, it's about a doctor and its experience and how he goes out of the box, how he thinks, you know, like his mind, his presence of mind is able to save the day, is able to save the situation, right? Now, in this excerpt from the Citadel, Andrew Manson, newly out of medical school, has just begun his medical practice as an assistant to Dr. Edward Page in the small Welsh mining town of Blenheim. Welsh, Wales, right? So we talk about England, Ireland, Wales, Wales over there. Mining town of Blenheim. As he is returning from a disappointing evening with Christine, the girl he loves, he is met by Joe Morgan. Joe and his wife, who have been married nearly 20 years, are expecting their first child. Now, this is the story of Dr. Andrew Manson. He is out of medical school and he has begun his medical practice, right? So he is there, he's starting his assistance, he's starting his medical practice and where in a small town. And in a small town, you know, it seems like, you know, so the doctor there, he almost knows all the people, he, because he's almost dealt with them. So the doctor is there, a very important person, right? And so what is the uh, setting of the story? As he's returning from a disappointing evening with Christine, the girl he loves, he's met by Joe Morgan. So Joe and his wife, who have been married nearly 20 years, are expecting their first child. So the chapter, birth. So Andrew, he's come back, right? He, he was out with his girlfriend, but it's very disappointing evening. He's not in a very good state of mind. And so he is there a little upset, a little disappointed. Once again, do doctors let their personal feelings, do they let their personal experiences overshadow them when they are dealing with patients, right? At the end of the day, doctors are human. They have feelings, they have a family, they have the ups and downs in their life, isn't it? So every profession has that. And once again, when we are in a workplace, when we are here, right? As a teacher, when I'm in the classroom, I'm in the school, I'm supposed to put all my worries, all my problems behind. Otherwise, kya kaoge? Aray, it seems ki ma'am had a bad day today, so that is why she's scolding us, isn't it? That is what you people say, right? But yes, we have to leave our worries, problems aside and deal with the situation at hand, okay? So this chapter, it is about that. So what is it that Andrew Manson does? He's a new doctor, he is not very experienced. And once again, we feel comfortable with doctors who are experienced, who knows what they are doing. And we think these youngsters, what are they going to do? But what is it that Dr. Andrew Manson does? That he feels so satisfied, right? And yes, he is able to make, uh, right, you can say the Patients also quite happy and satisfied. Though it was nearly midnight when Andrew reached Bringover, he found Joe Morgan waiting for him. Walking up and down with short steps between the closed surgery and the entrance to the house. At the sight of him, the burly driller's face expressed relief. So Joe Morgan, one of the miners, one of the persons from this village where he was working, he was a miner and he has come to take the doctor home. So, right, so yes, now we know the times here, the doctors, they would make house calls, not necessarily the patient coming to the hospital in case it's an emergency, in case it's a very big problem. 
at the sight of him, the burly Briller's face expressed in burly, a big person, well built, right? He's a miner working in the mines and he's very relieved to see this person. So he and his wife, they have been married for 20 years and now they are expecting their first child, right? So yes, so Joe Morgan was waiting for him, the doctor to come. A doctor, I'm glad to see you. I've been back and forward here this last hour. The missus wants you before time two. So he is there and a bit of a problem. So his wife is expecting. And so he has come to take the doctor to his house. Andrew abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs, told Morgan to wait. Now look at this line, abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs. He's busy in his own thoughts. He's come back. He had spent an evening with his girlfriend. He's not in a very happy state of mind. So Abhi Jesse Joe Morgan, he's coming and talking. So he's come out of his thoughts and he's dealing with the present situation. Are you, what's happened? He went into the house for his bag. Then together they set out for number 12, Blina Terrace. The night air was cool and deep with quiet mystery. Usually so perceptive, Andrew now felt dull and listless. He had no premonition that this night call would prove unusual still less that it would influence his whole future in death. So with doctors, you know, it is the word of mouth. So one patient uh, is going to tell his relative, they're going to tell others, they're going to refer and on and on. The reputation of the doctor spreads. Chahi wo good, chahi wo bad. And yes, here we people, Right, so sometimes we spread the word about, okay, okay, go to that doctor, he's very good, he's very patient, he's very experienced. Or sometimes, nay, nay, look at him, he charges too much of money and, uh, right, so don't waste your time over there. Right, so we uh, just uh, go according to that. So uh, what is the situation? Andrew is very tired, he is not very active. Because he's had a bad evening, he's quite disappointed himself, right? So he does not know what to do with this situation. But yes, he's just following the person. He's following Joe Morgan. And they have set out for their house. Okay, that is number 12, Lina Terrace. So they're walking there. And Andrew did, had no idea at all. Premonition. A uh, feeling, you know, for the future. He, he did not have any idea at all that today is going to be a very different uh, night of his life. It is something that is going to change his life forever. It is going to change his uh, reputation. It is going to change his outlook. Okay. And sometimes, you know, like for the benefit of our patients, the doctors, what did they do? They, unless and until, they, there are so many medical advances. It is sorry, discovery, you know, worrying, new changes happening, technology is there helping us so much. And when we are there outside, okay, so yeah, we feel that yes, we should not go to hospitals and all. But if God forbid someone does fall ill and we go over there, and if it is a major issue, we realize that. Medical sciences has advanced so much that they are able to, you know, like do the impossible, right? So there are instances that we have come across and it is because of this that we, you know, what enhance the reputation of the doctor. We say, yeah, of course, it's such a good hospital. They take good care. And yes, the doctor is very nice. The doctor is very understanding, very experienced okay right so now dr andrew he's going with his patient he's going with the, the what he was the patient's husband he's going to see his wife 
but he did not have any idea at all that today is a very different day aaj ka din uski life change kar dega what is his opinion what is his reputation in this small town the two men walked in silence until they reached the door of number 12 then joe drew up short i'll not come in he said and his voice showed signs of strain but man i know you do well as he said no i want to go inside you go take care of my wife but i know you are going to do well you are going to take care of us and yes he is quite tired he is exhausted also because he's been there outside the doctor's house waiting for him and uh, he came back quite late so he's come to take him to see his wife and yes after 20 years of married life they are expecting the first child so lots of hope lots of expectations inside a narrow stair led up to a small bedroom clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an oil lamp so we're talking about the times when uh, there is no electricity and uh, doctors did not have uh, so much of medical uh, you can uh, say advancement right so even the people were uh, also you know hesitant to go to the doctor and doctors are coming to the house only to deal with the patient clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an oil lamp here mrs morgan's mother a tall gray haired woman of nearly 70 and a stout elderly midwife waited beside the patient watching andrew's expression as he moved about the room so there are two ladies also there in addition to jo morgan's wife so mrs morgan that is right jo morgan's wife's mother and there is also a midwife okay so midwife we'll uh, not call her a nurse but uh, someone who has been trained you know like yes to deal with child birth right so she's not a qualified nurse but yes so someone from the village and of course she's been handling the women for so long so that midwife is there let me make you a cup of tea dr back said the former quickly after a few moments so mrs morgan said let me make you a cup of tea and he smiled faintly he saw that the old woman wise in experience realized that there must be a period of waiting that she was afraid he would leave the case saying he would return later so yes so she is afraid that he might go away say there's still time for the you know delivery of the child and he might go and he might not come back so she wanted to keep him busy don't fret mother i'll not run away but yeah the doctor is quite smart he said i won't run away don't worry down in the kitchen he drank the tea which she gave him overwrought as he was he could not snatch even an hour's sleep if he went home he knew too that the case here would demand all his attention a queer lethargy of spirit came upon him he decided to remain until everything was over so he's sitting there as it is he's quite exhausted because he is uh, quite disappointed today personal front pe he is unhappy ab usko lag raha hai ki ab yahan pe aake i don't know how long this is going to take and so these are little things which we are unaware of a doctors type so sometimes an emergency comes and they're busy throughout the night right and uh, we, we really don't know how difficult their lives are unless until you have a doctor in the family to hum log nahi understand kar sakte isn't it So right, so he's just sitting there. He's saying, "Don't worry." And as it is, he's very tired. He's very exhausted. उसको लग रहा है मैं यहाँ से नहीं जाऊँगा भी नहीं. Lethargy, क्या है? Exertion, tiredness. An hour later, he went upstairs again, noted the progress made, came down once more, sat by the kitchen fire. 
It was still, except for the rustle of a cinder in the grate and the slow tick-tock of the wall clock. No, there was another sound. The beat of Morgan's footsteps. As he paced in the street outside, the old woman opposite sat in a black dress, quite motionless, her eyes strangely alive and wise, probing, never leaving his face. So he went inside, fired kya ke kya. So there's just the sound of uh, this, you know, like the flames. But then when he listened carefully, there was another sound also. What was that? Outside, who is outside? Mr. Morgan. He's not entered the house. He said, I'll wait outside. He'll take care of my wife. And he's just walking outside. Then, of course, there's the sound of the clock. It's quite late at night. Extreme silence. And there are people who are very concerned, you know, right? And this old lady, that is Mrs. Morgan's mother, she's sitting there right in front of him and looking at him, worried, thinking, what is he going to do? Yes, sir. His thoughts were heavily muddled. Now, this paragraph, it talks about the personal feelings of Mr. What? Sorry, Dr. Andrew and what he was going through. So in his personal life also, there's a lot of disturbance, thoda sa issues and problems here, okay? His thoughts were heavy, muddled, not thinking clearly. The episode he had witnessed at Cardiff Station still obsessed him morbidly. It's quite sad about this episode that he had seen. What was it? He thought of Bramwell, foolishly devoted to a woman who deceived him sordidly, of Edward Page, bound to the shrewish blood. So she, he saw this, or he must have met his friends, one of them there, very attached with a woman, and she is quite clever, and she is like what? Shrewish, a clever person of Delhi, living unhappily apart from his wife. So he's just, he went to meet his, like what, Christine, and then he, uh, you know, saw two other things here happening. And so he realized that how that person is very unhappy. He's away from his wife and how he is living his life. His reason told him that all these marriages were dismal failures. So he's not very happy thinking about the future. He's not very happy thinking about what is going on. It was a conclusion which in his present state made him wince. So he's quite worried. No, I don't want this to happen. He wished to consider marriage as an idyllic state. Yes, he could not consider it with the image of Christine before him. Her eyes shining towards him admitted no other conclusion. I, I, I don't want such a married life where I'm unhappy. I want a married life where everything is perfect and happy. marriage, institution of marriage is where everybody is perfectly happy. 